Welcome to Extraterrestrial Reality. Today I want to talk about a few different things, a, a roundup basically of different things going on in the world of UFOs. And uh, first off, I want to talk about a story that I saw a few days ago that I never got around to uh, reporting about. It was about a ufologist from Britain who was able to capture a picture of a flying saucer. And I thought it was pretty interesting. This guy is actually a ufologist, and he was actually looking for things. He was deliberately looking in the sky, and then he finally saw something, and he got a picture of this thing. And it looks like your classic flying saucer. Now, he's calling it definitive proof that there's extraterrestrials among us, but uh, unfortunately, that's not going to work uh, in this world. Uh, in this world, we're going to need, uh, as a lot of us realize, uh, we're going to need actual, if definitive proof means actual alien body and or alien craft in hand. Uh, because I don't think anything else will do. The only way we're finally going to get over this hump is with stuff like that. Or, I mean, some very convincing documents uh, perhaps getting uh, leaked or released by uh, the secret control group uh, f in the United States, for instance. Uh, then perhaps. But uh, outside of that, pi pictures like this, I mean, these are a dime a dozen. We've been seeing these kind of pictures for decades. Uh, this picture is no, no different than the McMinnville picture from 1950. Uh, no different from the William Rhodes picture that was taken over Phoenix, Arizona in 1947. It's no different than those uh, those three pictures that were taken by a Mexican gentleman back just last year uh, of three of a picture of a flying saucer ho hovering over his house. It's no different than any of that. None of that constitutes definitive evidence uh, as far as the entire world is concerned. We need to have something better than that. But anyway, I'd I like to go through this story quick here. It says uh, this it was originally reported in the Mirror. And it says, uh, Brit UFO Hunter says new snaps are definitive evidence that we are not alone. New images show a UFO flying over the Devon countryside, an extraterrestrial hunter has claimed. The spooky snaps reveal an alien flying saucer, according to John Mooner, who photographed the, the strange presence on Monday. Mr. Mooner said he was scanning the skies for extraterrestrials when he saw the mysterious visitor over the Tain estuary. A glint of light instantly caught my eye as something metallic looking came out from a cloud, he explained. I was completely gobsmacked by what I was seeing. It was unmistakably a flying saucer with two black rectangular windows on the dome portion of the craft and four black openings along the bottom part of its structure. Yeah, it is pretty neat looking. Uh, I, I mean, it's... <laughs> and I, we, we, we've heard about these kind of flying saucers before, these, these kind of descriptions, and, uh, and here we are again. I mean, that's what, that's what they look like. I mean, sometimes that's, that's, that, that's the description that we've, we've heard from different people over the decades. Continuing here, it says, I could also see some type of force field emanating around it, he added. John was able to capture the otherworldly pics on his Nikon P900 digital camera. The snaps show a blurry shape that does somewhat resemble an alien craft from a 1950s science fiction film. Okay, let me stop there again. Uh, I don't think this writer of this article realizes that the craft that was depicted in 1950s science fiction films was actually based on pictures that other people had taken and descriptions that people had provided of these craft, that, that they were saucer-shaped. Uh, that, that's, that's why when they made movies in the 1950s showing flying saucers, that's because that's what people were seeing starting in the late 1940s. So then by, as the 50s start rolling, rolling on, like uh, for instance... Uh, in 1956, there was a movie called Earth vs. the Flying Saucers. There were, the Flying Saucers were based on descriptions by people who had witnessed these things as well as photographs, uh, like the 1950 McMinnville uh, UFO. Anyway, continuing. Mr. Mooner, a, film UFO, a firm UFO believer who also claims to have been abducted by aliens, said the object soon vanished into a cloud. And when it left, he said, it shot off at speeds of up to 1,000 miles per hour. Okay, let me just stop there for a, for a minute. Of course, we don't have things like that. We don't have things that just could hover in the sky and then just shoot off at 1,000 miles per hour. We just don't have that kind of technology. Anyway, continuing. I was so excited, I continued to monitor, monitor the area with the hope of sighting this incredible craft once again. Then, minutes later, I actually got the chance to see it again when it swiftly shot out from the cloud. This time, however, I only captured the underside of the anomalous saucer craft. For John, it's, quote, definitive evidence, end quote, that aliens are visiting the Earth. He said, this is absolutely genuine. The alien presence is real. We are not alone. It's not Moon Misty. This is not his first time spotting UFOs. He said he saw them other places too. But anyway, I'll leave the uh, link so you can check this out for yourself. And he's right. 
Uh, I believe this guy. I don't think he's making it up. I think the picture is genuine. Uh, I think there are, of course, you have to be careful on the internet. There are, uh, I would say, way more hoaxes on the internet than there are uh, real images. Uh, but this one here is real. And I think this guy is an investigator. And he's, he was deliberately looking for it. And he finally got one. Uh, and he got a pretty good picture of it. Of course, I've seen better pictures. Uh, no question about that. Uh, but again, he's right. We are not alone, and the alien presence is real. I thought this was a story worth talking about. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not definitive evidence. I mean, maybe personally, for him, it's definitive evidence. But, I mean, if he was getting abducted by aliens already, he should have already had the, he, he already had definitive evidence. I mean, once you would... Uh, encounter these things up close and personal right that's definitive evidence you don't need much more but uh but it is this is what he saw was real and to him it's definitive evidence but it's not going to be definitive evidence for the, the for the world uh, as a whole unfortunately uh we we need to have actual alien bodies and or uh spacecraft itself in hand uh or documentation uh documentation that could be either be leaked or released by the secret control group well, that shows us pictures, video, uh, you know, records of, of recoveries, incidents, things that they haven't told us about over the, that happened over the years, uh, encounters between military officials and actual extraterrestrials. Some people say that's something that's happened in the past. That kind of stuff would constitute definitive evidence. This, unfortunately, just goes on to the pile of things, the pile of pictures and film of film and video that we already have, uh, that's already been collected and amassed over the decades. Uh, but it is interesting, uh, to say the least, no question about it. I do find this very compelling. Okay, and then uh, moving on, I I, uh, I came across, I saw that uh, David Grush has been talking to uh, a Dutch publication. And uh, I was I re received some information again from uh, one of my f uh, followers on YouTube. Saywan P has alerted me uh, to some of the comments that Grush has provided to this Dutch uh, publication. Now the problem is is that you can't get into it because there's a paywall, and I'm not going to pay <laughs> pay for this, right? But I did receive some comments that did come out of that uh, interview, and I would like to go through some of those comments. And this is what Saywan P had sent to me. Uh, it says here, bombshell new interview with David Grush for Dutch Magazine. And uh, here's what, here were some of the com uh, comments. There was a Q&A going on here. And the, and the interviewer asked, are you threatened by what you are putting out now? And Grush responded, I can't comment on that, but very unpleasant things have happened, both on a personal and career level. And then the interviewer asked, why are you ringing the bell? And the response is, I know that the United U.S. Department of Defense is withholding crucial information from Congress especially the possession of UAP and alien remains by our secret service. Now, again, they have to remember, this is, this is what's translated using a computer. Now, I don't know if he said secret service. Right? I, I, I'm not sure about that. Uh, so anyway, continuing here, it says, they refuse to share crucial information and deny its existence. It is even criminal to withhold this from your drivers. That's why I started ringing the bell. So again, uh, what does he mean by that from the computer drivers i mean i'm not sure again when you're when you're trans using a computer computer to translate an article from uh from one language to another it doesn't work out uh, properly all the time as some of you probably already know anyway it says another question was how are you able to do that do you have some sort of security clearance and then the answer is uh, this is partly due to the national defense authorization whistleblower act which guarantees the protection of whistleblowers I filed a complaint in May 2022 and had an intelligence officer testimonial drawn up. And then the next question was, how did you get the inspector general to let you share information about the Mussolini UAP? The answer is because the UAP crash happened on Italian soil and it happened almost 90 years ago. And then the question was, are you are only America and Italy involved? And the answer is no. There are there are also known cases in Russia, for example. It even resulted in a race with the Russians to see who could master the UAP technology first. Then the next question was, what is the most important thing this UAP technology can offer humanity? And the answer is one of the most scandalous facets of withholding the technology is that we could have been generating clean energy for decades, but continue to deliberately pollute the earth with oil. Climate change tech is being withheld. This technology has the potential to have a hugely positive impact on the ecosystem. The Department of Energy, which is also part of the secret services. Again, I don't think that they're saying secret services. I don't think he was saying secret services. 
Uh, but anyway, continuing here. So the Department of Energy, which is also part of the Secret Services, has some explaining to do because this is a crime against humanity and the Earth. We use the tech for war and not for peace and nature. The people who withhold this will one day have to apply for amnesty somewhere for crimes against humanity. And then the next question was, has anyone tried to address this before? And the answer was, yes, but they have disappeared or have been silenced with serious threats. This is life-threatening knowledge. So there you go. Grush is talking about this stuff. I think it's interesting, the stuff that he's talking about with regard to this Italian craft. I mean, when I first heard that, it sounds oh, that sounds ridiculous. But you know what? I, I just don't, I guess, you know... You hear these things when you hear first hear something, right? Or you hear a story and, you, and at first you think, oh, that couldn't have been, right? Well, why would they let him talk about that? Well, maybe the reason is, is because it did happen someplace else. And who knows? I mean, apparently the inspector general allowed him to talk about that. But anyway, there was more on this uh, piece. And, and uh, uh, Vicky Verma, who, oh, who has a website here, Hows and Whys, he did an article about this too, about this uh, interview that Grush had with... Uh, recently and it says here david grush has authentic italy ufo crash documents journalist confirmed testimony imminent and of course this was uh, again from the same dutch interview and i'm not going to read the whole article but i will lead the link for this one too uh but anyway here's what it says here uh i'm going to sc scroll through it here a little bit okay yeah meanwhile dutch website revu journalist max moskovich had another interview with Mr. Grush asserting that the UAP task force has not disclosed everything to the United States Congress and that there is another secretive organization within the Pentagon withholding information from them. He mentions the existence of crashed UFOs and the bodies of aliens in the possession of the United States. However, he is unable to provide evidence for his claims due to restrictions imposed on him. Moskowitz writes that David Grush, a whistleblower with a valid top secret security clearance GS-15, alleges that there is another organization operating even more secretly within the Pentagon, withholding information from the UAP task force. Of course, we all know that there is another secret organization operating within the Pentagon, uh, the secret control group. I don't know who knows what it's called. Uh, anyway, continuing here, it says, Mr. Grush's main claim is that the United States possesses exotic bio biological material created from non-human intelligence technology. Grush indicates that he has seen and partly also possesses documents that prove his claims. The problem, however, is that he is not allowed to show these documents and that his story therefore remains mainly anecdotal since he himself never saw UFOs and aliens during his years of service. Now, let me just stop there for a second. So he is actually saying in this article, apparently, according to this article, he, he, that he actually has some documents, uh, but he can't share them. So it's, he actually does have some evidence, but he can't share them. Uh, anyway, continuing here. But Grush also confirms, like the late Senator Harry Reid, that Lockheed Martin may have the recovered alien technology and is using it in their development programs on behalf of the state. Moskowitz writes, and this, is, this is the Dutch to English translation, I myself was allowed to see these official documents a few weeks ago from an anonymous source who is close to Grush's inner circle, and they seem genuine to me. Now, before I go on here, it sounds to me like, okay, somebody who's closely associated with Grush apparently showed this Dutch reporter uh, documentation. Okay, let's continue here. Uh, documentation, that, uh, by the way, uh, that's uh, supposed to be top secret. Uh, they bear official logos and are signed by the Inspector General, an officially appointed and designated person who has to sign for the authenticity of a secret document. Uh, it is certain that everything that moves UAP within the American borders, land, airspace, and waters is and remains strictly secret. But that which does not occur or has not occurred on sovereign American territory and, moreover, is already quite dated is not yet regulated. Grush can share this with the outside world. And that, apparently this is why Grush was allowed to share uh, what he knows about this Italy crash from 1933. And it goes on here to say, Moskowitz further discusses Italy UFO crash case involving the United States' owned UAP UFO that allegedly crashed near the town of Magenta in northern Italy in the 1930s. It describes how the Americans came into possession of this UFO with initial confusion among the Italians who believed it could be a secret German weapon. The object was eventually transported to America and stored, presumably, in Area 51 S4, a location associated with alleged secret research and testing of advanced aircraft and technology. 
And here's another Dutch to English translation. It says here, the most captiv captivating revelation is that there is a UFO U U uh, in the possession of the United States, which crashed near the town of Magenta. Uh, and then it goes, in 1933, the fascist dictator Benito Mussolini is informed by his frantic secret service about a crashed aerial vehicle that they cannot identify as anything of human origin. Initially, the Italians suspect that their German neighbors may have lost a secret weapon, but the Germans deny any knowledge of it. An Italian counterpart to Area 51 is hastily established, and efforts are made to study the craft. Now, let me just stop there for one second. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that one bit. I don't believe that you could say that's a counterpart to Area 51. There was no counterparts being built, uh, being constructed in Italy that would <laughs> that could be compared to Area 51. Okay, maybe it was put somewhere secretive. But that's about it. You know, maybe in a hangar somewhere or something like that. But we're not talking. We're not talking this top secret military base like Area 51. No way. I just don't. I don't buy that one minute. But anyway, continuing here, it says, During World War II, the Americans invade Italy through Sicily and eventually come across the UFO. The object is transported to the United States and presumably stored in Area 51 S4. Mr. Roberto Penotti, who leads a UFO research organization called ICER in Italy and was a former head of the Italian Secret Service, obtained verified government documents, documents reportedly from an anonymous benefactor. These documents reveal the cover-up by the Italian Secret Service through telegram or correspondence with El Duce. In essence, they instruct the media to report that a meteorite has impacted rather than an unidentified extraterrestrial aircraft. Grush possesses a document containing a sketch of the UFO accompanied by annotations from someone in Mussolini's inner circle. Furthermore, Grush claims that the United States also possesses two extraterrestrial bodies discovered at the Magenta crash in 1933. According to Grush, they were also transported to Area 51 and preserved in formaldehyde. The whistleblower casually mentioned that a total of 11 UFOs have been recovered and concealed from the public eye. It is of utmost importance to personally interview the whistleblower. Uh, anyway, and then the, uh, he was asked about the, the threats, and you know I already talked about that. He said he can't comment on that. But uh, I'll leave the links for this article, too, so you can check it out. But here, I guess the... <laughs> What they're saying is there was two extraterrestrial bodies that were a part of that crash in 1933. So uh, were they preserved in formaldehyde starting in 1933 and then they were shipped over to the United States? I mean, I, mean, I guess it'd, it'd be amazing to me if this cover-up, because in my mind, I always think that the cover-up starts in 1947. But I guess it could turn out that it started earlier than that. I mean, it could have started out... Uh, I mean, there was the case of the Cape G uh, Gerard Du case in Missouri in 1941. There was... Uh, the, I mean that that could be was that real? I mean, th did some something crash in 1941 in Cape Girardeau? Uh, apparently, some people say yes. Uh, I don't know. There were bot apparently uh, uh, alien bodies were there. Uh, we there's not a lot of inf information on on that one. Not like Roswell. Uh, it just I I just wonder like I mean if you're if you're like in say 1944 1945 when the United States receives this recovered craft from Italy with with bodies if this story is in fact true right say that really happened I mean at that time are are, are they thinking this what is this is this extraterrestrial do they do they come to that conclusion initially I'm just not so sure. I mean in my mind I think when you first see these things I mean at, at, at a certain point in time I just to me it's just hard for me to imagine that anybody would come to that conclusion right away that these are extraterrestrial. I mean, they might look at them and say, oh, well, maybe they're, uh, you know, just short people that were in this and they, and they got, this is what the, they got burned up. Or, I mean, I just don't know if scientists would have came to that conclusion. It would have been difficult for scientists at that time to come to that conclusion. Uh, I mean, I think that by 1947, when the Roswell incident happened, because of all the sightings of, of flying saucers, and then something comes down, and, okay, these things obviously aren't human. I mean, the conclusion had it, they had to come to that conclusion, right? That this thing is, these are not from this earth, obviously. But if these other crashes happened before that, did they make those conclusions earlier and they were covering up all the, before 1947? That's, if that's the truth, I mean, that's, that, that will be amazing to me. That will be a, an eye opener to me. I, I don't, I don't personally believe that right now. I just have trouble with that for some reason, I guess, because I'm just, 
uh, my mind is stuck on 1947. I believe that the cover-up started with Roswell. But hey, if this stuff is true, and say some of these other crashes pre-1947 are true, like the Cape Girardeau case or the or the Trinity crash that Jacques Vallée's been reporting about that happened in 1945, if all these things are true, then the cover-up's lasting longer than we ever realized. Uh, as early as 1941, actually, and the Italian government was actually covering it up since 1933. I mean, it's just unbelievable. But uh, that would be surprising to me if that's the case. If these other alleged crashes were real and and the cover up is last, it was been going on a lot longer than since 1947. I, I would be surprised about that if that turns out to be the case. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, we are back. Uh, Scientific American, a pretty prestigious publication. Uh, published an opinion piece this week from debunker Keith Clore. I haven't mentioned this guy in a while. Yeah, every now and then this guy, he's a New York journalist. He, he, he's been writing articles over the past couple of years that I've talked about on this show where he debunks UFOs all the time. And he has another one out here, and it's one of those cases where, where somebody mixes in fact with fiction. And we're going to go through this, okay? Now, here was the headline here. It says, UFOs keep appearing in the news. Here's why we can't quit them. Uh, and then the subheadline reads, For most of us, aliens are a source of mystery and fun, which keeps them forever in vogue. Uh, and he starts off here. It says, In 1995, Fox Television captivated millions with a medical autopsy of a space alien. The 17-minute black-and-white clip purported to show military doctors examining a bloated, humanoid-looking extraterrestrial that had died in a flying saucer crash. The broadcast generated so much hoopla that Fox aired it two more times that year, tacking on added footage of the UFO wreckage. Even then, the hoax, recycling the Roswell myth, which holds that the United States government in 1947 recovered an alien craft from the New Mexico desert, was old hat. Okay, let me just stop right there. Already, you see, you see the mixture of fact and fiction. Okay, for one thing, it's a fact. In 1995, that, that short film, I've talked about this before, that was a hoax. I knew it was a hoax right when it happened. Right when that came out and I saw that, I knew that that was a hoax for a variety of different reasons. Uh, other ufologists, people who study this, said it was a hoax. Or they didn't believe it either. Uh, a lot of people who really didn't know any better, they, they didn't know. I mean, Fox News is coming, Fox TV showing it, Fox Television showing you this thing, saying, hey, this is real, this is real. So people are, some people just, they don't know any better and they believed it, right? And then, of course, like it was over 10 years later, I believe it was 13 years later, uh, the guy who put that uh, phony piece of footage together admitted that it was a hoax. And he, what he did, he did it, they make money. Why not? That's what this, you know, that's how we human beings are. That's true. So that part of this article already, there's, that's some truth, a nugget of truth in there. That was true. But then he says this, he says, uh, even then the hoax recycling the Roswell myth, which holds that the United States, States government in 47 recovered an alien craft was old hat. And so he's saying in 1995 that the, for one thing, he's calling the Roswell uh, crash, he's calling that whole incident a myth. That's what, that's false right there. And he's saying that in 1995, it was old hat, meaning it was uh, out of date. Nobody really cared anymore, which is totally false. I was alive in 1995, right? And there were documentaries all the time coming on about Roswell. They were talking about it all the time on TV. And then, in fact, two years later, during the 50th anniversary of Roswell, there were articles throughout newspapers throughout the country. In fact, I wrote some of the, some articles for the local newspaper that I was working at in 1997. No, it was not old hat in 1995. Roswell was still a big deal. In fact, in 1997, the Air Force had released the, the Roswell Roswell report case closed that was the book where they tried to say that uh, the bodies that people saw were actually anthropomorphic dummies that the air force used as test during test drops in from 1953 to 1959 that's when they came out with that big report uh, so no it wasn't old hat in, in in 1995 or even two years later it was not old hat so again, that's again mixing mixing truth with lies. That's what that's what these debunkers love to do. Actually, this guy has no again. He, all this guy does is write nonsense. It's always he's always he doesn't believe in this personally. He he can't accept it. He doesn't even want to study it properly. And he just he, he's obviously he hasn't. Obviously he hasn't. Or he wouldn't write. He would have written something like that. But anyway, let's keep going through this uh, piece of garbage here. It says the latest version of this fable. Okay, now right right off the bat, he's calling it fable. He's calling this a he's calling the whole phenomenon of this extraterrestrial presence on this planet a fable because he just doesn't believe it. He doesn't accept it. He hasn't read he's done any research on this, right? 
Obviously, he hasn't had his own personal experience because if he did, he wouldn't be talking like this. Uh, but this guy's actually an idiot. He, he has no idea what he's talking about. Keith Clore is an idiot. Anyway, let's continue here. It says, the latest version of this fable is the widely circulated story of, you guessed it, crashed UFOs that the United States government has been hiding for many decades. In June, a recently retired intelligence community whistleblower made this claim, like others before him in years past. The, uh, nobody's made this kind of claim like this in years past. I mean, somebody that's going to be testifying in front of Congress, along with apparently a bunch of other whistleblowers too, people who actually worked in these programs are going to be testifying in front of Congress. Obviously, this guy's not really paying much attention. Or, you know, I, I like to know, like, when, when the truth finally does come out, are people like, are is Scientific American still going to bring, allow people like this to put in opinion pieces in their publications? I mean, I like to know that. I'd like to know the answer to that. I mean, why, 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 why would they allow something like this? Why would they allow this kind of trash in, in, their, in their publication? Anyway, continuing it here. Uh, that the latest bombshell landed without any evidence or corroboration has not dampened our feverish enthusiasm. Are we re finally ready to admit UFOs are aliens? Asks the Daily Beast in its headline, headlines. Americans have a bottomless appetite for this stuff. The initial story of crashed aliens was the Roswell incident, which stemmed from an actual, <laughs> which stemmed from an actual Cold War event. A balloon from a then-secret U.S. military project had fallen near Roswell, New Mexico, just as the flying saucer phenomenon was taking root. Ever since, the crashed saucer myth and UFOs in general have steadily profited news and entertainment outlets, and they have sated a deep human need for mystery. Okay, let me just stop there again. It wasn't a balloon. I mean, if this guy did his research, anybody who would do the research on this, anybody who would read books, uh, like the, uh, the people who really did research on this, like the books put out by Donald Schmidt and, Th and uh, Thomas uh, Carey, right? If, if they were to look at those books and read the uh, the research that was that they conducted, all the people that were interviewed over the years, people that were there, right? People that handled the material. Jesse Marcel Sr., the top intelligence official. How many times we got to go through this? They don't give this guy any credit. The top intelligence official in Roswell said that uh, it was a cover-up, that, that in those pictures he was holding a balloon, that was not, the, that was, he was told to do that. He was ordered to do that. The real stuff was in a different room, right? The materials that he brought uh, to Texas that day. So, and then there's also so many other witnesses. I'm not going to get into all again here, right? But there was, the Air Force never presented any any kind of real good evidence to back up anything that they put out, like saying that it was dummies or, or they didn't even have any document, they don't even have any documentation from that era. They, it was all uh, apparently uh, destroyed for some unknown reason or lost or whatever. I mean, they're lying, of course. That All that documentation from Roswell obviously is, has to be in the possession of the secret control group. They can't let that stuff out. But this guy, again, they, they keep pushing this balloon nonsense. It's not, it wasn't a balloon. It was not, how could it have possibly been a balloon when the top intelligence agent uh, officer at that place, among uh, hundreds of other people who have talked about this, that said it was a cover-up themselves. People who were there said it was a cover-up. It was not a balloon, period. That's what they said. It was, uh, Walter Holt saw bodies and wreckage. I just talked about that the other day. But again, they keep putting this nonsense out there. Uh, anyway, continuing. It says, I get it. Aliens are cool. Fuzzy UFO videos, which, let's be honest, the media uncritically hype way too much, are fun. Maybe this is why friends and family members are always texting me the latest, craziest UFO story that it is quickly proven to be bogus. UFO, UFOs are so damn entertaining. Okay, uh, every so every UFO story that he comes across quickly are proven to be bogus. I, I, for, for one thing, just for instance, let's throw out a for instance here, right? That Vegas UFO story has not been proven bogus yet, right? It's not been proven bogus. In fact, I think it's it, it was actually real, right? Uh, some of these other things on, you know, that you see on Twitter and stuff like that, of course, there's a lot of hoaxes out there, but there are some things that are happening out there, like the one I was just talking about earlier. With the picture from the guy uh, uh, that, from the UK that took that picture with uh, the flying saucer hovering over Devon, that's 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 not going to be that's not quickly proved to be bogus. Why? Because Mick West sat back in his chair and said, "You know what? That's a bug. That's an insect." Oh man, these these debunkers get you angry. But again, I like I wonder like is this guy going to be able to find a job? Like say disclosure does happen this year, like I was just talking about recently. Say it happens this summer. Are they are these people still going to allow him to write for their publications? I mean, I, I like to know how did this guy get this job? How does how do you I mean how do you fail upward like this? I like to know. Like yeah, he must have to known somebody, right? You don't you don't you you can't have somebody reach this kind of ascend to these heights, right? 
in, in the, to have your stuff published in the New York Times or, and Scientific American by, I mean, obviously this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, so he's failed upward all these years, right? So how does that happen? Like, who does he, who did he know to get this job? I'd like to know these, I'd like to have answers to these questions. Anyway, let's continue with this piece of good, piece of junk. Uh, it says here, a quick public service announcement. All this talk for decades about a cosmic Watergate is not amusing to everyone. Some people get really worked up and land in serious legal trouble. Others find it a gateway to a toxic, paranoid swamp and entice vulnerable minds to join them. Okay, let me tell you something. Again, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Uh, for one thing, the, the the idea of extraterrestrials, I mean, it's not that it's fun, it's that it's interesting, it's intriguing, it's not fun, hey, this is fun! No, it's not fun, right? It's just interesting, we're intrigued, right? We want to know more. People out there that know that there's something going on here want to know more. We want the acknowledgement to finally happen from the people we put into power. That's what we want to know. And, and to say this is like, oh, he doesn't like this whole cover-up stuff, the cosmic Watergate. That's, that sucks. That People don't like that. No, yeah, we don't like it. Why would anybody like it? Nobody likes that. He thinks that uh, everybody likes this, apparently. Uh, uh, the people in the UFO community. Uh, but that's not true, right? That's not true. No, nobody likes this. And this sucks. We want the truth to come out already. There is a cosmic Watergate, just like Stan Friedman said. Just because this guy doesn't like it because he's never studied it and doesn't want to accept this reality, he has to say uh, nonsense like this. Anyway, continuing. It says, for the most part, the ubiquitous alien icon is now a gimmicky relic from a larger landscape of escapist fantasy, the same terrain that has relegated other faddish subjects like the Bermuda Triangle and Nessie to the annals of pseudoscience. UFOs, in contrast, remain an enduring American obsession. Why? Are they so much fun that we can't let them go? It's not about fun again. It's not about fun. This is not fun for, for some people out there. It's not fun whatsoever, right? But see, again, this guy's working from a position where he doesn't even believe it in the first place. He doesn't even give it a second thought because he just doesn't believe it. That's it. He doesn't study it. He, doesn't know, he has, has done no research on this, but yet he's allowed to work for write for prestigious uh, publications like Scientific American, among others. Uh, continuing here, it's more than that. Despite centuries of scientific and social progress, re progress, we remain at our most intimate level believers, writes author Mark Fitch in Paranormal Nation. Why America needs ghosts, UFOs, and Bigfoot. Indeed, this is a core senti sentiment of the hit 1990s X-Files show, which is embodied on the poster of a flying saucer above Agent Mulder's off office wall with the phrase, I want to believe. Uh, perhaps it also explains why Scott Brando, a diligent monitor and debunker of phony UFO videos that regularly go viral online, is always playing whack-a-mole. People fall prey to such hoaxes because they need to believe something extraordinary or satisfy their craving for mystery, he wrote in an email to Scientific American. Well, let me tell you something. It's more than just a mystery for a lot of people out there. A lot of people out there have experienced these things up close. A lot of people have seen these creatures encounter these beings up close. It's not a mystery. There's something really there. We just want to know more. We want to know what the hell, what are they doing here? What, what's, what's the government know about them? That's all we want to know. See, again, these people, they can't, they just can't grasp it. They just, they can't believe it. To them, it's still silly. This guy's living in the past. Right, he's living in a time when the stigmatization uh, program was at full uh, power. Anyway, continuing here it says uh, the human desire for mystery is something that UFO promoters and they seem to have multiplied in recent years are adept at fulfilling. Hence, all the recycling and reimagining of classic UFO narratives, such as Men in Black. On occasion, this guy again, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. He hasn't studied it, but yet he's writing for Scientific American about this. He just doesn't know what he's talking about. On occasion, there is a creative blending that invents a new myth for the UFO canon. The latest is a 512-acre ranch in rural Utah that is supposedly a hot spot for UFOs, poltergeists, animal mutilations, and shadow creatures. A Las Vegas TV journalist who is also a host of a conspiracy-themed radio show refers to the ranch as Par Paranormal Disneyland. And he's talking about, of course, George Knapp there, but he's not naming him by name. Uh, 
Uh, if, let me just say this. In the whole scheme of things, right, Skinwalker Ranch is just a tiny grain of, of sand in this, right? <laughs> I, I don't even watch the TV show at all. I don't even care about that, right? I, I am interested in the story of that uh, those farmers that lived there back in the 1990s and their experiences that they had, but I don't follow these TV shows. I'm just not that kind of person that follows these uh, TV shows where you, maybe next week you're going to find out the truth finally. I, that's, I think that's nonsense, right, to, to me. I just don't want to do that. I don't want to waste my time with that kind of stuff i i'd rather you know uh work read about disclosure the efforts that are going on in congress and, and that kind of thing that's what i'm more interested in right and there, there are some good documentaries out there that i check out like stuff that james fox makes or or uh or, or books I, I read a lot of different books on this that's it you know but other than that i'm not going to sit there and watch these ridiculous shows i don't watch stuff like ancient aliens i don't care about those kind of things i don't care about the the hunt for a skinwalker ranch i'm just not interested in that and that and trying to focus on the on this on this uh subject in that manner i know a lot of people find it interesting i'm just it's just it's just not for me i i'm not knocking these things i'm just saying it's just not for me but see again this guy makes it sound like that's what everybody's doing right because they're not i'm not i know there's a lot of other people who aren't interested in that stuff either but they are interested in moving toward disclosure it's not just about uh putting out a tv show and making money for for a lot of people it's out it's about trying to get to the end of this trying to get to the end game and get across that red line the red line that this guy has no inkling in his brain uh keith clore uh that it even exists that they, that we are marching toward a red line because we really are all right uh continuing here and he gets into the Skinwalker Ranch here. He says, it's the basis for a scripted reality show on the History Channel called The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. The main character is a retired Department of Defense astrophysicist, a featured character for years on Ancient Aliens, who also happens to be the former chief scientist of the Pentagon's 2022 UAP report produced by an agency task force. Wait, this gets better. So he's, so he's, he's basically lumping everybody right into... Uh, basically everybody in ufology right everybody who's been studying this he's trying to trying to make it sound like for one thing that travis taylor is, is an idiot that's what he's trying to do here right and, and he's trying to lump everyone into everyone who's trying to follow this and everyone who's interested in this what they're all people that sit around watching skinwalker ranch the, the search for single skinwalker ranch and believe everything that's on that show all the time which just isn't is, it's not the case right but he but this is how this guy paints it Anyway, he says, wait, this gets better. The person formerly in charge of the Pentagon's UFO task force is now appearing on the Skinwalker show as himself after he, too, retired after a long DOD career. Both have reportedly claimed that a Skinwalker ranch poltergeist followed them home. Nonetheless, this hasn't kept them from returning to the ranch. Okay. Uh, again, I, I don't know what's going on there, right? But at the Skinwalker Ranch, if if, if these things that these people claim are real or not, I, I don't know. I'm I, I don't I'm not there, right? I'm not watching the show and I'm not paying attention to it. But again, this guy thinks that, that thinks that that's what this is all about right now. That it, the UFO phenomenon is all uh, uh, the, the the centerpiece to all of this is Skinwalker Ranch, which is just not the case. Uh, do I believe that things happened at Skinwalker Ranch before? Yes, I most certainly do. I, I, I think that some of these things that happened to those ranchers back in the 90s, uh, I think they were telling the truth. Why would they make stuff like this up? I don't think anybody would. They ended up having, they ended up leaving eventually. They just, why would anyone want to put up with something like that all the time? So that's why now you have people there studying it. There's a TV show. Okay, are they making money on it? Are they cut, breaking even on it? Are they just doing it for fun? Are they doing it because they're very, they're, they think there's something there? I don't know, right? But the, again, this guy is making it sound like the entire UFO community universe is centered in Skinwalker Ranch, which is not the case. It's about other things. It's about people, whistleblowers going to Congress and telling the, uh, trying to get the, uh, blow the lid off this thing finally. Anyway, let's continue here. Uh, uh, like the latest UFO whistleblower, these fellows all have otherwise impeccable credentials. As Mick West, a prominent skeptic and debunker, of course he has to write about Mick West, writes in a 2021 Guardian piece, such, such influential messengers couch weak evidence for UFOs as compelling. Don't be fooled, he cautions. Uh, but what if, like fans of professional wrestling, we know it's just a big goof and don't care? After all, ghost stories are fun. It's the same with UFOs. The filmmaker behind the alien autopsy video later said he regretted his deception, but admitted it was a joke, a bit of fun. So basically now he's lumping in the entire UFO community and trying to compare it with professional wrestling just because of the way he views Skinwalker Ranch, the, the, you know, the, that, 
he thinks that everyone is everyone in the ufo community is all sitting around focused completely all all their their brain energy is focused on skinwalker ranch and that's where all the answers to all these mysteries are going to come from no it's a show it's an entertaining show what what does it matter right what does it matter what it is right that's not that's not the focus of everyone in the ufo community i can assure you all right but this guy's painting it as it is and not only that but he's comparing he's actually comparing this whole ufo uh, cover up and the the interest in ufos to the world wrestling federation that's what he's doing here making it you know you everyone knows that that's a joke right it's all fake it's been it's always been fake right so that, this isn't fake ufos aren't fake when things come to you come to you when you see these things when people experience these beings it wasn't fake when people see craft up close and personal it's not fake all right, continuing here, it says, avid consumers of UFO stories seem to be in on the joke. Part of this whole thing is just wonderful BS, Adam Frank, an astrophysicist at the University of Rochester, said to me in a recent conversation about the latest wave of UFO mania. It has nothing to do with science, but we all love talking about aliens. Frank was speaking in general about the silliness factor that has long made it virtually impossible to take UFOs seriously, except as a socio sociocultural phenomenon. So that's absolutely absurd. Uh, again, the, 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 you're listening to people, right, who never really studied this. They don't know what they're talking about. They say it's for, for because he, th these people, it's virtually impossible for them to take it seriously, right? It's virtually impossible for them to take it seriously because they don't, because they see, they, all, all, they'll look at something like Skinwalker Ranch and base their whole all, entire opinion on something like that, which is stupid on their behalf. Uh, anyway, continuing here, it says, Pop culture needs a consistent diet of this junk food to make our incessant, incessant UFO hunger. Will we ever kick the habit? UFO promoters obviously don't think so. In recent days, the whistleblower has spoken out more to say that the multiple space alien crafts uh, retrieved by the United States military are the size of football fields and held by unnamed U.S. defense contractors. Additionally, he suggested that the Vatican is involved in the cover-up and that, oh, by the way, people have been murdered to keep all this hushed up. That does not sound like fun. Fun. Perhaps this is why no one texted texted it to me. Yeah. See, this guy doesn't even know what he's talking about. He has no business writing about this. Scientific American. I mean, the the, the basically put something out there. This is something that should be. Uh, this this is a science issue, right? But the, to treat it like a joke, like this guy does. I mean, you you have a, a magazine, a publication out there, Scientific American, that puts that puts commentary in like this, that's trying to treat something like a whole joke. When meanwhile, you actually have whistleblowers who are testifying behind the scenes, who and who might be soon testifying in public hearings, uh, as we've been talking about, right? Uh, and who will be under oath talking about, about programs that they were working on. I mean, they're not going to be lying about this. They're not going to come and lie about this kind of thing. That would They could end up in prison if they do that. Uh, what, why, why did the Congress include whistleblower language? In, 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 see, again, they're, they're, they're lumping all the entire UFO community into, into one little heap, which, which is just not the case. Uh, there are people in this in, interested in this that are very serious about this. They just want to know more. They want to know more. They know, want to know what the government knows, what the secret control group has. Obviously, this guy here never studied, never seriously uh, studied this. Did never take, never has taken it seriously, and he's writing j garbage like this. And Scientific American publishes it. Like again, I wonder once once the truth does finally drop, do, does people like Keith Clore do they say, you know what, we don't need your stuff anymore? That 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 would be the uh, you know, if I were them, that's what I would do. Uh, anyway, until next time.